Welcome back to the table. We are speaking today with world renowned motivational speaker Les Brown. So you recently learned that the public speaking is in your DNA. And here you thought God just gave this to you in your mother's womb. But there was a connection to how you ended up in public speaking. But before we get to that story, I had to interrupt you. You were talking about this trip to South Africa. Tell us quickly about no, that. No, not before the trip. We I taught and train people in South Africa, mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. group of entrepreneurs and business leaders and community leaders, how to use their story to influence people to distract, dispute, and inspire. Hmm. How people live their lives as a result of the story they believe about themselves. Mm. So I teach them how to use their story to create a significant emotional event that will transform that audience individually and collectively and help them to begin to not only impact people's lives, but to grow their revenue. Which is why I knew you still had more to dish out. That Let makes the a record whole show. Itself. Yes. So let's talk about though this very personal family journey that you yes. spent a lot of time. I'm a on. foster kid, and then we were adopted by twin brother and I. Okay. We were born in an abandoned building in a poor section of Miami, Florida, called Liberty mm. City. And we Tell were adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. I always mm. say that God took me out of my biological mother's womb and placed me in the heart of my adopted mother. A beautiful yes. woman. Yes. She a only had a third grade education, but she had a PhD in mother wit. Mm. Yes. yes, indeed. Yes. Dorothy Bell Rucker out of Gainesville, Georgia. Uh huh. She gave me life, but Mamie Brown taught me and my brother how to live life. Mm, yes, I love and so that. So this is this is this is us there in in, Handsome in, little boy. in Liberty City. Yeah, but our little bald heads. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful set of twin yeah, boys and, there. And, and, and it's, a, it's a it's a testament that it doesn't matter where you start. What matters most is where you're going. Right. That you don't want to just go through life. You want to grow through it. And we all have defining moments in our lives. Tell me about this defining moment. How you uh, went from the, the bridge that connects you from from the biological mother to the adoptive mother, and then this beautiful story of how you end up learning more about the biological mother. My oldest son, Calvin, he mm -hmm. called me one day mm -hmm. and he said, Dad, I found them. I wow. said, found who? He said, our family. And he did a DNA test. These DNA tests tell us so much more that, now. Yes, that, that our birth family lived in Gainesville, Georgia. Right. This is We're my birth mother, Dorothy Bell Rucker. She was a motivational speaker. Oh, wow. And when I gave a speech, the first speech out of Florida in Atlanta at Barbara King's Church, Hillside oh, Spiritual Center. Oh, may God rest her soul. My birth mother was on the first row. She knew me, Did you? but I oh. didn't know her. Was there any conversation that no, day? No, no. She just watched me, they say. Mm. Can you imagine what that moment must have been like for her? Yeah. Seeing her yes. son, this yes. world-renowned speaker. I always wondered, did she ever see me or know what happened to us? Mm. And so she tell did. me how you end up going from a moment where she gets to see her son on stage in this beautiful house of worship to knowing who she was. My son did this DNA search, mm -hmm. and so the person who was helping him turned out to be our cousin. <laughs> wow. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> okay. But the stories, these are why the stories are so rich and yes, beautiful. Yes, and so Sweetie, she works at Delta Airlines, uh, we communicated with her and she said, your mother, Dorothy Bell Rucker, was a motivational speaker. I called George Rucker, which is one of my brothers, and I said, we have a DNA test say that Dorothy Bell Rucker is, is my mother. Is mother. And he said, well, if So was this one of those situations where everybody, like we know in so many adoptions, everybody knows, okay, Les's mama is Miss Rucker, but we know who adopted her, but no one really told you early no, on, right? No, never, never knew that. And he mm. said, if she's your mother, that's my mother, mother too, and you're my, my brother. brother. And so the family embraced me like that. Mm. So my brother Rudy, we Before we run out of time, George, let's talk about yes. when you finally get to put your eyes on wh who you know to be your mother in your in your journey. It was humbling, but I was found it shocking that she was a motivational speaker. And then my grandmother, I have a book called You've Got to Be Hungry. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, D Beulah Rucker, they have the Beulah Rucker Museum in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. That's her me. there. Yes. Yes. Beautiful woman. And 
they said she was hungry to learn. Mm. And we know you talk about and that a lot. And she taught herself how to read using the newspaper that was used to insulate the cabin where she lived. But before we run out of time, tell me about that moment where you make your way to Gainesville and you finally, I mean, your mother sadly had passed at that point, but you learned, this is mama. I stood there and I talked to her. I said, I've been looking for you for a long time. Mm. And I'm so glad that I found you. Sometimes you don't know that you need something until mm. you find it. Tell and us about this humbling. moment. That's when what I talked to her. And, and said, that's a bust of her, right? Yeah, that's a bust of her. Yeah, she was, uh, she was friends with Mary McLeod Bethune. Oh, wow. They spoke together, and Eleanor Roosevelt. Wow. And, and, and she taught veterans and people in the community how to read and taught them how to teach others how to read because we didn't have any schools in that area where African Americans can go. She was quite a person. What a powerhouse yes. of a woman, but it yes. explains so much. Mm -hmm. Didn't it make yeah. so much sense? Absolutely. What a beautiful story. We're going to continue this conversation, but just the look in your eye, you can tell that's the look of a, a boy who has met his mother, respectfully, was, of course. I was that's a man, by but a the boy experience. who's met yes. his mother. I stayed there for hours. I bet. All right, stay with us. When we return, Les will share some great advice with a 20-year-old young man who is looking for some sage advice, and we're all going to benefit. Stay with us.